Okay. Um, on to our next speaker then. So we've got um, Dr. Dina Miller here from Virginia Tech um, and talking about uh, IPM and how that's impacted German cockroaches in the US. Uh, how, how are you doing, Dina? Good, good. How are you? Yes, doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. What time is it where you are? It is... 6 40 in the morning that oh, means okay. i had to put on my mascara very early yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why like most mornings on these uh, zoom calls you're like okay how do i look you know and things. but no um you're, you're doing doing amazing and thank you so much for being with us um and yeah i will i will leave you to it to share your screen yeah tell us about german cockroaches okay um let me see if i can get this going here uh yeah they, is that yeah, that's, good that's perfect perfect okay well um oops let me tell you a little bit about myself so i'm a professor here at virginia tech and the urban pest management specialist for the state of virginia and i i have been overwhelmed with bed bugs i would say the last 10 years working on bed bugs but i do need to tell you that german cockroaches are my first love uh started working on german cockroaches during my master's and phd and um, I happen to be doing several projects um, involving German cockroaches right now, mainly in low income housing here in the United States. Because one of the problems that we have in government housing is they don't pay what pest control costs. And this is one of the problems. Um, usually, and to see if it's the same in the UK, um, when you have multi-unit housing facilities, um, the government will typically pay or the management will typically pay one price. And if you divide that by the number of doors, you come to realize that the technician who has to go in there and try and take care of the pest problem really doesn't have the time to do anything but pesticide application, not pest control. And this is something I'm trying to change in the United States. So one of the things I want to talk about is how the misapplication of integrated pest management, okay, which is required by our government agencies over here for pest control companies to use, has impacted German cockroach infestations. And I want to make, um, I'm on a campaign to make a change to change that terminology from integrated pest management, which none of our clients seem to understand, to assessment-based pest management. So at least they would understand that something is going to be assessed. And what I mean typically is population size. So I just want to show you, this is an apartment, um, and you can take a look at that windowsill there. And there are 17 German cockroach egg cases in that windowsill. Now, are the cockroaches hanging out in the windowsill because they really like brightly lit areas? Or is it because all the good cockroach places are taken up by other cockroaches? And that's because the population is so high. And this is in one of our government housing facilities that is currently under a pest control contract. And you can look at that windowsill and see how well that contract is working. Okay, I want you to realize the term integrated pest management actually came from agriculture. It didn't come from urban pest control like we're accustomed to. And what the um, source of it was in about the 1950s, there was quite an overdependence that farmers had on pesticides, specifically DDT, which had led to pest resistance. And part of that problem is all the natural enemies had been eliminated because of the use of the insecticide, but then the pests on these agricultural crops um, had been selected for resistance to the products, and now the farmers couldn't get rid of them, and that was a real problem. And of course, in the 1960s, Rachel Carson publishes this book, Silent Spring, that sort of alerted the public to the problems with pesticides, and suddenly everybody came, became aware of these issues. Well, in the 1970s, then agricultural producers, farmers got organized and came up with the term 
integrated pest management, where basically this was supposed to be an economical and environmentally sound practice of dealing with this pest resistance okay so realize that integrated pest management was not intended as a low toxicity method for getting rid of pests it was for dealing with resistance and that was one of the issues so instead of the farmers applying insecticides on a weekly or monthly basis that they had been doing previously, they actually had to go out there and start looking at their crops. So basically, the assessment involved the farmer going out and scouting their crop to identify the pests and then see how many pests there were to really assess the pest pressure. And one thing that farmers still use today, very widespread in the agricultural industry, is using specific metrics. So one is the economic injury level. So if you go out and scout your crop and see that you have too many corn earworms in your cornfield, and you're going to have crop damage and lose money come harvest time, that's what tells you, okay, now I apply a pesticide because I need to. I just don't do it on a monthly basis, okay? Now I do it because I have too many pests. And also there's the economic threshold level that they use as a metric. So let's say it's April, early in the season and the farmer knows they're familiar with the pests they're like wow if I go out and scout my crop and I see this many pests on my crop in April I know come August when it's harvest time I'm going to have damage therefore it is advisable that I apply pesticides now in April to get rid of these populations now in the urban environment where you and I work we do not have economic injury level or economic threshold levels, but those are the basis of integrated pest management. And the farmer typically, after applying, making an insecticide application, will go out and scout the crop again to see if he's now reduced the pests to a manageable level. And what that means is, are the pests now reduced that he's not going to lose money come harvest time? Okay. And of of course, farmers luckily know everything about their crops, so they know how many pests they need to reduce the numbers to. Well, certainly in the urban environment, there's a lot of different government organizations and apartment managers that have an interest in IPM, but the belief has been that it's a non-toxic method of pest control that's really based on resident sanitation. OK, that's the general belief. Well, where did that come from? You know, that's not where that's not where um, IPM originated. And realize, too, we all know that humans are unwilling to tolerate even one bed bug, OK, in their apartment or what have you, but they still want the least expensive treatment. So what is reducing pests to a manageable level mean? Okay, and then of course, feelings about pesticide use in the home is extremely variable. I don't know how it is in the UK, but here in Virginia, where I live, I'm in Southwest Virginia, and I'm originally from California. We have people that are, honey, you just do whatever it takes to get rid of them old bugs. I'll be over here cleaning my gun. You go and kill them all, okay? But if we go up to like Northern Virginia in the same state near Washington, DC, you'll have people, I'm very concerned about you using any insecticides in my home. Will it hurt my dog? So the feelings can be quite variable. And the other thing, and that's because we deal with humans, you know, but the other thing is too, is this scouting or assessment is completely lost. And that is the basis of integrated pest management. Um, I just want to ask how many of you have walked into a home and seen this large number of cans of insecticide that people have purchased on their own to take care of their pests? Okay, well, urban integrated pest management has kind of moved into a belief that it's some sort of low toxicity or non-toxic pest control procedure that is based on resident sanitation. 
And over here in the US, I don't know if it's the same in the UK, everybody's like, well, the resident has to clean up, you know, when, then we can use integrated pest management, but sanitation is really important. Well, I want to ask you, do apartment managers care about integrated pest management? Realize that most of them um, are like, well, this isn't my money, so should I have to pay for pest control? I'm using, you know, my employer's money. Um, my home is not the one that's infested with all of these roaches. And hey, it's the resident's fault if they've got cockroaches in there. They don't clean up. That's their own problem. And certainly these are the places, um, I work in public housing on a regular basis, two weeks every month, I'm working in public housing doing baiting for cockroaches. And this is a picture that I took, fairly typical of what we see in there. But if we look at the pest control contract that our government agencies have, you notice that they say that this housing authority requires an integrated pest management approach to pest control. This is in their contract. And environmentally friendly pest control methods that are not toxic to humans. Okay, so that's the interpretation. But some of the suggested products that that same contract listed was caramates, Okay, that's misspelled. They mean carbamates. That's a type of chemistry that was actually banned from indoor use in 1996. But this is what they have written in their contract for 2018, a government agency. And then they say organic phosphates. Well, they mean organophosphates. Okay, <laughs> and those also were banned from indoor use. So one of the problems we have is a lot of agencies just don't understand anything about pest control or pesticide use. And so their contracts that they ask pest control companies to bid on are kind of ridiculous. And especially when it comes to the term integrated pest management, because they just don't know what it means. <clears throat> Okay, assessment is the basis of integrated pest management, but realize most managers of multi-unit housing don't do any assessment of building infestation levels for years. So we can have huge buildups of German cockroaches in there. And these days, the same thing is happening with bed bugs. Um, managers don't understand what integrated pest management is, and they will typically go with the lowest bidder. And so the prices that we see our government agencies paying is about five five 5.62 euros per door. Sorry, I had to convert it into euros and I don't really understand that. And the break-even cost for our pest control companies is about a dollar or 1.4 euros per minute. Okay, so you can imagine at that 5.6 and our break even cost is 1.4, that technician doesn't have any time to spend in that unit. It takes an average of 49, 49 seconds just to get in the door. Knock, 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 wait, 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 knock, 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 wait, wait. Hopefully they open the door and by the time you get in, you've only got a couple of minutes to apply a spray formulation and get out and move on to the next unit. Now, no one asks for any records indicating fewer cockroaches after treatment than before either. And long-term pest issues are typically blamed on the residents rather than resistance to spray formulation insecticides. And I'm sure as all of you know, German cockroaches here in the US are resistant to all of the spray formulations that we have because they are pyrethroid based typically and pyrethroids are now 50 years old. So we have selected for those individuals that just genetically are not susceptible to those sprays anymore. We can knock them down, but you never know that four hours later, they all get back up. Well, how did I get into this business? <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> the way that I fund my laboratory is different chemical companies can come to me and say, hey, we have a new bait product we want to try out and we want to try it out in the field and see how well it works. Well, I started working with our government housing authorities because they were known to have, you know, 
huge populations of German roaches that were resistant to spray formulation insecticides. So it really made sense to go out and test baits in these locations where we had heavy populations, but also where sprays were not working for us. So this is Richmond Public Housing. This is in the state that I live. And this is where low income housing people on average pay about $30 in US in rent per month in these locations and the cockroach infestations are just insane. So when I started going in there and looking, <laughs> first of all, realize our health department has no authority over government housing. So you can see that what these populations look like. Um, that picture on the right, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see a kitchen drawer. And if you look at it up close, look at all of these egg cases. And each of these egg cases has 14 to 52 offspring in it. And think about how many mother cockroaches this represents and how many of those boyfriends are responsible for these egg cases. So the populations are quite high. And here you can see this is an upstairs closet on the left. And then on the right, you can see that this is the um, <clears throat> sink cabinets that's below the sink downstairs. And just the amount of debris that has accumulated over time in these apartments. So all that debris you see in the bottom right there are the dead bodies, the feces, the shed skins, the old egg cases of all the cockroaches that have obviously been there for years. And what happens is during the winter time, people tend to close up their units, turn the heat on, all of this dries out, and this particulate matter becomes airborne and everybody's breathing it. And that's why German cockroaches are the number one cause of allergies and asthma in inner city children. And you can see why that would be the case. <clears throat> if you look at this picture, this is inside the kitchen in one of the apartments that we worked in and they had removed all of the kitchen cabinets because they were going to replace them. Well, all of that brown stuff that you're looking at there are cockroach feces that have accumulated over the years. Now, the question always is, are they going to clean all of that off? No, they're going to paint right over it. So you can imagine how many layers of cockroach feces exist in each of these apartments. It's very interesting. When I go walking in there, I'll have a light switch that I need to turn on. And the white switch is perfectly white and all painted nicely, but it's got a granular texture. And that's because of all the feces that have been painted over on that light switch. Okay, so like I had mentioned, excuse me, <laughs> hmm. the um, public housing pays a ridiculous low amount of money for treatment in here. And I can't even call it treatment. It's just a pesticide application. And take a look at this. This Richmond public housing where I do my work <clears throat> paid five point seven euros per door in 2010. And then as of 2020, they were paying 5.2 euros per door. Isn't that ridiculous? Can you think of any other industry where 10 years later, the price has actually gone down? Okay. And the cockroaches are just ridiculous in number all over these locations. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, what everybody blames, and this is how everybody gets away with this, is the sanitation, resident sanitation. And as you can see, this is a typical kitchen in one of the places I work in. And yes, there is a lot of food that is left out there for the cockroaches, and the cockroaches really appreciate it. So yes, this does help the populations do very well, this lack of sanitation. <clears throat> well, that is how I got into this assessment-based pest management, is working in this public housing, um, basically 
being paid by chemical companies to evaluate new bait formulations. So this all came about sort of accidentally. Um, but basically, we go in there and pre-trap the apartments. And I want to point out, I'm using the low-line traps here. And the reason for that is they have so many cockroaches in their apartments that I need something that's like three centimeters, four centimeters by seven centimeters, a large adhesive surface. If I had any smaller monitors, they'd fill up in 15 minutes. And I wouldn't be able to tell if apartment A had more cockroaches than apartment B. So I have to use large traps in these situations. So we go in there, put traps out overnight. Okay, I say here 24 hours, but really a lot of times we're getting in there two o'clock in the afternoon and picking them up at nine o'clock the next morning. And these traps are labeled A, B, and C. A is for above the sink, B is for below the sink, and C is for behind the toilet. I spend a lot of time in toilets. And then we would return the next day and pick up the traps, count the cockroaches. And this is typical trap catch. And I'm asking you guys, how many cockroaches are we seeing right here? Well, if you look at all those little tiny ones that are around the perimeter, edge and then see that the larger ones are in the middle, this is actually 1,300 cockroaches in this trap. How do I know this? I've counted them myself, okay? Well, then the based on the trap catch, okay, that would determine our baiting protocol when we were testing these bait formulations for chemical companies. So we would go out and find which units were the most infested, we would use those for our research study, and we would apply 30 grams of bait on day one. 30 grams, okay? We knew there was a lot of cockroaches, so they got a whole tube of bait. And then we would come back on day 14, put the traps out again overnight, pick them up, count them. And if our trap catch was greater than 500, then they got two more tubes of bait or 60 grams. If the trap catch was greater than 100, they got one tube of bait. If it was 50 to 100, they got half a tube of bait. If it was less than 50, then they would get a quarter of a tube of bait or 7.5 grams, okay? Well, one of the things that we realized is putting out the bait in these little droplets as recommended by the, um, by the label um, took forever. And again, these quarter of a dime size applications, little tiny droplets there um, was, contaminating surfaces when we had to put out so much of this bait. And there is no technician with your break-even cost of, you know, 1.4 euros a minute could take the time to do this. They would never be, no technician would have enough time to put out enough bait. And if you look at that picture on the right, you can see that there are seven cockroaches in that picture. And then this is one of the bait applications. Well, those seven cockroaches are gonna eat that bait droplet up right now. What about the other 16,000 cockroaches in this apartment? How many of these droplets do we have to put out? So we were looking for a way to put out the bait quickly and just so happened to come on using wax paper, just seemed easier. And we cut it into like two and a half centimeter by two and a half centimeter squares, folded it on the diagonal and ran a line of bait down the crease when we folded it on the diagonal. And you can see uh, in the right hand there, that is my technician, Morgan, who is making a bunch of what we later called the bait tacos. Okay, so I used to spend my nights in the hotel cutting cut right wax paper. And this brand is very important. This is a brand that my grandmother used since I was a child. And it's about one euro per box and it is used for baking 
And we found out accidentally that this brand of wax paper seems to be very attractive to the cockroaches. So if you don't have this brand in the UK, try some of the other baking brands and see what the cockroaches might like. But again, I was cutting these squares um, at night and that does take some time, but we found out that if any of you do quilting, quilting, there are little mechanisms that you can get that will cut quilting scare, squares of fabric. And we are now using that because then uh, we run it through the quilting thing, um, little machine there, and it'll cut like 36 of these in one run. So, but we used to do it by hand like this. And then we would mark our bait tubes. So most of our baits that we have available either have 30 grams or 33 grams in it. But what we do is just mark where we see the end of the bait in the tube. So we don't get super exact about it. And that's a whole tube. Then we mark it in the middle. That's half a tube. Then we mark the two edges, basically. And that tells us where the quarter of a tube is. And we can just watch when we're applying this um, into the wax paper and know how much bait we have applied. And again, like I said, this is the bait taco. And we place them in the cracks and crevices the exact same locations that we would put the bait typically in direct contact with these surfaces. But instead, they're in the bait tacos and we're able to offer the roaches a lot more at once. Um, we're also, there's an advantage we found. People will have stacks of mail and things like that in their apartment and cockroaches will be living in between all of the envelopes. Well, we can't spray that with insecticide. We can't put gel bait in there, but we could put the bait tacos in between the envelopes and the cockroaches loved it. Okay, and when I say they loved it, this is the response we get from the cockroaches. They will eat all of the bait, even eat through the wax paper. Now we don't close the wax paper completely. It's gotta be open like a taco, but the cockroaches will come right to it. And we've been very satisfied with the results. Take a look at this. This is on top of someone's refrigerator. You can see several bait tacos there, but in the foreground, you can also see some cooked rice. So the cockroaches had an alternative food source right there. But here we are at like two o'clock in the afternoon, putting out these bait tacos and the cockroaches come running to it. Don't ask me how they know it's there but they do come running to it. Now I took a picture of this and showed it to the manager of the apartment complex. And he said, well, how long did you have to wait before you took that picture? I'm like, it was before we even left. And we were in these units for about 15 minutes. Okay, so the cockroaches really seem to be attracted to this wax paper with the bait inside. And we tried a number of bait formulations. So the question I always get from everybody is which bait do they like the best? Well, we've tried them all and they all seem to like every bait formulation available. So they must be very tasty. I've tasted the bait myself, which I don't recommend you do, but I didn't find it that it tasted so good, but the cockroaches really seem to like it. And just to show you, this is one study that we did for Syngenta. And we were testing Max Force Magnum and Advion, and then Syngenta had come up with three test formulations that hadn't even hit the market yet. And we started looking at how these baits performed in the tacos in these different apartment units. So we had six different apartment units for each bait, each bait formulation that we tested. And I just wanna point out to you, this is the reduction in trap catch. So from day zero, we say that trap catch was 100%, but you notice that by day three, once they had started eating the bait and the bait had been available to them, we had like a 60 to 80% reduction in our trap catch. And then we put traps out again about day seven, that stayed about the same. Then day 14, of course, is when we really measure the number of roaches we catch in the traps and then put out more bait according to that, whether they get 60 grams, 30 grams. And you can see by day 60, we had a 90 to 98% reduction in trap catch in all the units, regardless of what bait we used. 
Now the blue line is controls. <clears throat> so we only put traps in there. Okay, and you can see that the traps actually reduce the population a little bit, but on day 14, one of our six units, she let off a bug bomb. Okay, and yes, that did reduce the population somewhat, but you notice by day 30, it bounced right back. Okay, so the bug bombs really aren't doing it for us. Well, I started talking about this method at pest management meetings and scientific meetings and housing meetings and stuff, and public housing in the U.S. took notice and asked me to write a model pest management contract for them, which I did, but they still haven't used it, unfortunately. And I just want to point out the president of our pest management association in the U.S. in 2015, um, his company actually adopted this methodology, but he didn't like Mexican food, so he started calling them the bait cannolis, but still was putting them out and wrote this article. Well, one of the advantages of working with US HUD when I started giving them the results of this study is I actually was able to get another grant from them to work at three different housing sites. So we had the Richmond site that you can see there on the lower left, but on the upper right, you can see this is Hopewell Housing, which is also in Virginia. And then we went and worked in North Carolina as well, and that's Rocky Mount Housing on the lower right. All three of these facilities, which have 2,000 to 4,000 units each, had major cockroach issues. They had three different contractors. They were paying three different prices, all ridiculously low. And they had three different treatment protocols, whatever treatment means, OK? This wasn't pest elimination, but they were going in there, spraying something, and then coming out. So again, we did our overnight assessment. So you can see that we put trap A above the sink. That's what Ross is doing there. Um, trap B was below the sink. And you can see that I have just pulled out the one that has been there overnight. And then trap C is behind the toilet. My mother's so proud of me with all my toilet work. And we had 60 units in each housing authority that we were working in. And the thing that surprised us is all three of these housing authorities, all the units that we were working in, um, were just loaded with cockroaches. So what is the problem? Well, first of all, when I started talking to management, management thinks that they are paying for product only. OK, and the companies that they hire are using spray formulations because the spray formulations are the cheapest, you know, 0.28 euros kits applied in, you know, these these units. So that's really rather inexpensive um, because once you formulate some of these products, it gets really cheap basically. But what the managers don't realize, they don't even think about labor cost. They never even think about a technician going in there and applying and paying for his or her time. Okay. So they think the answer is spray and they don't give any credit to any of us as being the technicians that have to use our brains on what is best to use. Now, they also don't know anything about resistance. And you'll notice if you start talking to your customers, they think you have to spray. They, you say insect, we say spray. They don't think about using any other products. But realize, of course, a lot of these cockroaches will not die from spray application applications, but if you use spray and bait together, which a lot of companies do, um, sick cockroaches don't want to eat bait. So that is kind of a problem, but they'll recover from the spray. So we've got to be looking to, for alternatives to these spray applications. And we have to get our customers to understand that we use our brains when we're out there. That's what they're paying for, not just product. Okay, and again, in all three of these housing authorities, um, when I spoke with the managers, they all blamed the cockroach problems on the residents because of the lack of sanitation. And you can see, yes, that was an issue, definitely. Here's, I love this kitchen. You know, it's a mess. It's got all kinds of food debris, but they do have a broom and a rake in there. 
Um, this is the upstairs floor between the bedrooms and the bathroom. And you can see there's bags of chips and a lot of debris from the past. And then also people are sleeping on the floor, leaving food um, up in the bedrooms and things like that. People have dogs that they're not allowed to have. And of course, we have the dog poop. And this was such a sad story. This is mama dog and her puppies living in an upstairs closet closet. Okay. But all of this kind of contributes to the cockroach populations in addition to the food debris that is laying around. And a lot of the residents are doing their own pest control. I'm sure you've seen this. This is bait that looks like it was applied in 1998 and it's still there today. And this is very common to see. You know, I don't know that the snap punch kills roaches or anything like that, but if you have to have five containers of roach killer and you've still got a zillion roaches in there, I don't know why the residents aren't concluding that their products are not working. It's ridiculous. So we go in there, put out our three traps. And if you look at that piece of paper in the center, we mark each of the um, units and we write down how many roaches are caught in trap A, trap B, and trap C. And then we record how much bait that we apply based on that. And you can see that Roy here is very happy about the number of cockroaches he caught in his trap. Shamika is standing behind me there there in that picture. She doesn't seem to be as excited about it, but I was excited. Well, all of you that are in the pest control industry know that we don't have time to count the roaches in the trap, but we can look at those roaches, how many we catch, and say which ones are high, medium, or low-level infestations. And then that determines the amount of bait that we apply. Okay, so we're not guessing how much to apply. It's determined by what the trap catch is. And the other thing that I really recommend that we do is take pictures of our trap catch. That's the assessment part, okay? Assessment-based pest management. And we send these photographs to the management, whether they want them or not, so they can see the populations that they have in their apartments. Okay. Again, low level infestations, and you can see the picture of low level trap catch overnight. So that's one to 50 cockroaches. They get a quarter of a tube of bait or 7.5 grams. Medium, if we catch 50 to 100 roaches in there, then they get half a tube. Okay, and yes, I say low one to 50 and then 50 to 100. You need to make a decision on whether it's a low or medium when you're looking at it. Um, if you have more than 100, though, you definitely want a whole tube of bait put out, 30 grams. If you have more than 500, okay, and you've already had some time go by <laughs> where these roaches are doing really well in these apartments, you better start off with two tubes of bait, absolutely. So you can see what those trap catches look like. Okay, we use different formulations in each of these sites we were working in because we wanted to see how they would perform, okay? So in North Carolina, we used Advion Evolution, which is by Syngenta. We used Vendetta Nitro, which is MGK in um, Hopewell Housing. And then Max Horse Magnum, which was then Bayer, now Envu, um, Max Horse Magnum we used in Richmond housing because that's what their current pest control company was using and it didn't look like it was working. So we wanted to see if they were actually putting enough bait out or if there was any resistance. So if we went in on the first day and caught zero to 24 cockroaches, we use those as controls. But if we had 25 to 74, then the apartment unit got a quarter of a tube of bait or 7.5 grams. If we had 75 to 249, they got half a tube, 250, they got a whole tube. And if you look at this picture of the trap that Mark is holding there, look how many roaches are in there. I promise you that is close to a thousand. Okay, just so you get some idea, here's what 15 grams of bait looks like in tacos, okay? Just to give you a little visual, here's what 30 grams looks like, and we do prepare the tacos when we're in the home there. Now, then we come back on day 14, two weeks later, okay? And if trap catch is still greater than 500 when we put the traps out overnight, then they get 60 grams of bait. So that means that within that first, 
you know, couple of weeks, they've got 90 grams put in there. Um, if trap catch is greater than 100, they get 30 grams, 50 to 100, they get 15 grams, 1 to 50, 7.5 grams. And this is what 60 grams of bait looks like. So make sure you have plenty of bait. Now, this is one of my most infested units that I've been working in for ages. <laughs> and so we're putting out the 60 grams of bait here. But one of the things that we discovered is the cockroaches find this bait so attractive that they were actually coming out and starting to feed on the bait. If you can see this here with my arrow, feed on the bait even before we got the tacos put out. And it didn't matter what bait formulation we were using. This picture on the right now is a different bait formulation and they loved that one as well. So one of the things we learned right away is that these baits are very attractive to the cockroaches and they eat it all up. So when we come back in two weeks, and after the first month, we come back every 30 days. So every two weeks, the first month, and then every 30 days thereafter, you can see that they've eaten up all the bait and chewed their way through the wax paper. So this is what the resident really likes to see. Now, one thing that was very important is I had to talk to these residents. Um, one of the reasons we didn't ask the resident to do any cleaning or anything is we were told by the apartment management that we could not ask the residents to clean anything up because we were not being paid to work there. So this is one of the things that we found out is actually by not disturbing the cockroaches or not asking the resident to clean, they all seem to be happy and hungry and ready to eat the bait. But we did have to ask the resident not to spray their own insecticides. And they're like, oh no, I have to, I have to spray. And we're like, no, no. How about this? How about you don't spray for three days and then I'm gonna come back in two weeks and ask you what you think. That made all the difference. Oh my goodness, nobody has ever bothered to ask the residents what they think and they have plenty of opinions. So it was really advantageous applying this bait having the resident there, not asking them to clean anything, and then getting their opinions. Because the other advantage of having the resident home, which we can't do if we are using spray, is be able to ask them for other locations to put the bait tacos. Because I would go and ask the resident, is there any other place that you're seeing cockroaches? Oh yes, behind my son's bed. Oh, come here. And then you'd find all these chips and things that you wouldn't have found if you only had three minutes to be in there. And if the resident wasn't there to direct you. So it was really advantageous this way. And you can see the cockroaches loved it. Well, here are our results. Um, we used a, vi a variety of baits in these units over time because we didn't want to develop resistance. So we changed baits every 90 days. So this is Richmond Public Housing. And over the course of a year and one month, we applied in the heavy units an average of 200 grams of bait. Okay, that is a lot of bait to apply. And this was starting using Max Force Magnum the first three months, then we switched to OptiGuard Cockroach, then Vendetta Nitro, then Advion Evolution. And I wanna point out that we started the absolute worst time of year. So cockroaches double, triple and quadruple their populations during the summer months. And we started in July. If you started a new contract in December when it's really the coldest, um, you would get much better results because they're not reproducing like crazy. But still, we were able to reduce the populations in the high level units, that's the black line, um, by 90% and the medium level units by 97%. Now we did have a problem in the low level units and I have a note up here at the top um, where it says that five of our seven low level infested units, we had 100% elimination. However, two of the seven had a 480% increase in trap catch. And as it turns out, we had new people moving in. 
to those two units. And I guess they brought a bunch of cockroaches with them, but realize for a low level unit to get a 480% increase, we went from an average of two roaches in the three traps to nine roaches in the three traps. So we could totally get rid of those. But I also want to point out to you, which is important, we had almost complete elimination in January and we did not have the double, triple, and quadruple population increase during the summer months the following summer. So this was a huge advantage. Once we got rid of the cockroaches, they didn't come back. And this is with no resident cleaning at all. And we weren't necessarily treating the units next door either. These were arbitrarily sort of selected units. But it did take a lot of bait. Heavy, average 200 grams, medium 107, light 86. Now we had even better results in Hopewell housing, where the heavy units only required about 82 grams of bait, mediums, they were a little bit more challenging, 147, and light 39. And you notice that the um, heavy, infested units with the black line, we were pretty much able to eliminate between July and January. And again, they never came back. And the mediums, we were able to pretty much eliminate January, February, March by March, and they didn't come back. And again, we still had to battle the low level infestations a little bit. So we had two 100% eliminations in the high and medium, and then in about an 87% decrease in the lows. And this is going the first three months with Vendetta Nitro, the next three months OptiGuard Cockroach, then Max Force Magnum, then Advion Evolution. So very, very important to, um, to change your bait formulations. We had the best luck, actually. Let's see if I can get this up. I don't know what happened here. Um, we can still see can your you, presentation. Yeah. Um, I don't, I can't change the slide. There we go. Okay. Oh. All is well. <laughs> In the Rocky Mount Housing Authority, we had the best results. We were actually able to totally eliminate them by December and they never came back. So they went through summer and that was the end. And again, we were going back and forth in two um, Advion Evolution and OptiGuard Cockroach in this case. And the heavies received about 102 grams, mediums 91, lights 34. So we were monitoring and treating these units every 30 days um, and vacuuming was definitely very important. We didn't do it immediately, but we had so many dead cockroaches that we went in and vacuumed after we got into this by about a month or three months and just to eliminate the dead bodies. Um, we had no cockroach rebounds at all during the summer months and we had no resident cleaning or preparation for treatment very important. Don't disturb the cockroaches before you come and bring them snacks. You want them happy and hungry, okay? Um, we realize that pest management professionals really must assess these populations so housing can see what they get for their money, and you can show them the reduction over time. That makes them very happy. Um, no more guessing how much bait to apply. You use the trap catch numbers. Um, spray, spray application has led to cockroach resistance, but people think we have to spray. And I don't know how to change this, but this is an image we need to get on changing in 2020s. Assessment must be the basis of urban pest management. So that's why I'm pushing for APM. Okay, failure to control the cockroaches can no longer be blamed on the residents. I've got the data to show that we can totally eliminate the infestations. We have the power, but we need to remember, are we in the pesticide application business or are we in the pest control business? Ask yourself, very important. And I just wanna show you these pictures here and we can take any questions. We can totally eliminate the German cockroaches with no resident cleaning. And I just wanna point out to you, this is the trap catch, zero trap catch in these apartment units. And you can see how nice and tidy 
that they are. So thank you very much for your time. It was wonderful talking to all of you. Thank you so much, Professor Dini. That was uh, amazing. We've got lots and lots of positive comments. Um, we've, we, I said we're running over a little bit, and I was like, yeah, no, way are we, no way are we stopping, and everyone agrees as well, because it was just, uh, yeah, fascinating to hear. And, I mean, I, I said it earlier on in um, the forum uh, event today, but I, I, absolutely, they're not paying for a product. That's something I'm really passionate about. They're paying for that, you know, pest management kind of, professional approach from a technician that knows what they're doing and how they're doing it the product is actually the small cost it's the That's it's right. the time the labor the skill etc absolutely um agree with that um in terms of questions i said that there are lots of uh this is very interesting this is fantastic you know um in, everyone enjoying the presentation um in terms of more specific questions your the products that you mentioned you use in terms of the baits they're kind of trade names as we call them what are the active ingredients being used is it amidacloprid fipronil i don't know do you know the all of them yes amidacloprid fipronil all of the basic products out there we haven't run into a gel bait formulation yet that the cockroaches haven't liked so it's very you know all of the actives seem to work very well and the inert ingredients as well as being attractive to these cockroaches. It's just yeah. amazing to see the cockroaches come running to every formulation when they've got all of these other food selections within inches of them centimeters yeah. of them <laughs> absolutely yeah i, yeah. I can't um I'm just, there's some comments on on the chat section but also uh just just to comment generally i mean spraying for cockroaches is almost something of the past i don't think we really see it in the uk now possibly in high i mean even high level again baits are so amazing i do remember yeah. a day uh so 21 years ago was when i started the industry and there was some spraying that happened for cockroaches but then gel baits started to become more prominent and it was just a and a miraculous kind of tool that was given to us that you know um spraying was no longer needed right. and, and it's safer and also your taco um idea with replace putting the gel bait on there it's an easy way to better remove it as well so yes. when you're done with the baiting and you've got some left over it's easy you to can take just up. take them out no more contaminating surfaces either. yeah yes you can Absolutely. remove it no, it's good. Um, uh, I think, yeah, as I said, mostly there aren't many questions. It's just predominantly uh, it was an amazing presentation. Oh, there's one here. Uh, do you prefer gel bait that contain also an IGR, insect growth regulator? <laughs> You know, it's interesting. It's an interesting question because um, one of the things I'm seeing out there, and I think I'm going to need to do a study on this, is that there may be some resistance developing to IGRs also. Mm -hmm. But yes, we have used gel baits that are in combination with IGR. They seem to work great. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the gel bait seems to be the killer. OK, um, yeah. the problem we see is they have a lot of gentrol, which is methoprene or hydroprene um, that are getting placed by their contractors every three months under a stove. So you can pull somebody's stove out and there'll be 18 of these Gentrol point sources in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot of cockroaches with twisted wings, but they're also carrying egg cases now. Now, it's a question of, do those egg cases actually hatch? Do we have the 52 offspring coming out of there? Maybe we don't, but we've been using those products for an awfully long time. So I think we need to look at them closely. Mm -hmm. But as far as consumption and the cockroaches dying for those combinations that have an IGR in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the bait is killing them outright. I don't really see the point of the IGR exactly. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because you also get that with the gel baits where the, the cockroach will, will feed from it. And when that succumbs or, or dies, you also get sort of cannibalism, if you like, the other cockroaches feeding on those dead cockroaches. And that helps in like a cascade effect. Is that something you see? Well, you... The, it, not, not as much as we would like. OK, think about this. You know, in the laboratory, yes, we can get that cascading effect where they're feeding on the dead bodies of the other cockroaches. But in these yeah. locations, they have so many food sources that we don't don't see them consuming dead cockroach bodies because mm -hmm. they have a million other items to choose from for dinner. Of course, and that's, yeah. That's the challenge. It's the last option. It's like, do I really need to eat my uh, family member there? Mm, 
Yeah. There's another option they'll yeah. give for that, possibly. Yeah, yeah in good. situations where I think, you know, that are very clean, you know, or let's say restaurants where sanitation is much more emphasized and things like that, that maybe they don't have the advantage of having other food just everywhere, um, then maybe they do eat their brothers and sisters mm -hmm. then, you know, mm -hmm. but I see it much more in the laboratory than I see it in the field. Indeed, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um well listen i think i could i could ask you a million and one questions myself uh, and carry on but um yeah i think we'll we'll just leave it there for now and again extend my our gratitude for you joining us and we definitely will be requesting your presence again at some point so yay um, i'd love to do it <laughs> that's it indeed and everybody here would, would love you to come back as well so thank you so much um and yeah good luck with all your uh, future um endeavors with the cockroaches Okay. Well, thank right. you. Thanks for having me. It's always a thrill to talk about this to everybody because I Absolutely. love the cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, great. Good stuff. Thanks, Amy. That's so amazing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, fabulous everybody. Thank you for sticking with us. I know we run over a bit, but it's absolutely worth it, as you'd all agree. 